Hey gang, welcome back. I've been playing around with uh, this Hitler Turns East game and uh, it's pretty interesting stuff. And while this is not going to be a review, I wanted to share a few uh, comments about the game. And um, it's on the mechanics. Not the mechanics. Do I want to talk about the mechanics? I probably do want to talk a little bit about the mechanics. Uh, the I like the game, I think. I think the, uh, <clears throat> the size of the map, number of counters we're playing with, the... Uh, limited number of turns, 10 turns, so we're running from June 41 through March 42. Uh, the way the chip pool works and these command chits that I, I presented to you in another video earlier on, I explained how those kind of work. Everyone has a different movement allowance and there's some different abilities in each one. You know, if you're a hold, advanced to contact, you can't combat, uh, but you can move. If you're withdrawing, you can only move in certain directions. Uh, same with advancing, you can obviously only advance, you can't withdraw your units back towards your, your own lines. Uh, there's an assault concept and there's a blitz or mobile defense concept. And uh, they, they, then those uh, features, the features of those various command order types change as the weather changes. Uh, just slightly. Excuse me. <coughs> I've got some sort of pollen thing going on right now. Anyway, I, I don't even know what the victory conditions are. I, I always uh, figure you capture Moscow and a bunch of other cities and you kind of you win, right? That's kind of the way I've played it. But uh, most of these East Front games, excuse me, I forget where that is here. You've got to get so many points on this. There's a little track here. Every city that has red text for the name is worth a victory point. And I will find it any second now. Guy. Here it is, VPs, blah, 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 blah. At the end of the last game, turn, jump, play. Winds of Hills, 12 or more VP spaces with the line of communication to the west map edge. Boom. Otherwise, they win. All right, so I've got seven at turn six, and then very few, excuse me, very few Soviet units left on the map. Now, unfortunately, in the sixth turn, so in the fifth turn, uh, at the beginning of the fifth turn, if you had to say to me, oh, uh, you know, uh, the Germans are a knockdown drag out, going to win it. I would have just laughed at you because I was starting to feel like uh, the Soviet defense was too tough for too long, uh, too early, I should say. And uh, and in fact, I restarted this game three or four times because I'd made some mistakes playing it, didn't really read the rules properly, and it clearly didn't work out one way or the other. And so finally got it right, and uh, mostly right. And so in the fifth turn, Kleist uh, in this sector here, this is the, uh, the army group south, but each area of the map is, is broken into four areas and you activate each area. And the units can move in and out of them, but uh, anyway, we activated, had a lot of success uh, with some really good rolls and knocked out a bunch of units and, and in fact put a bunch of units out of supply. <laughs> Excuse me. And, uh, gosh. And, uh, this was this area is, is as you see it now empty, and so uh, in turn six, once we got our <coughs> our hold uh, advance to uh, contact uh, orders, we just rushed as far forward as we could and uh, captured uh, VP hexes, uh, and in fact, for the first time, the Germans actually got uh, the most of their activations before the Soviets got. All but the first one, they got a uh, hold attack up in the northwest they chose to use. A hold attack, it's, uh, that's what it says on the counter, but it's hold advance to contact. Uh, anyway, uh, so these guys cleaned house here. These guys roll three sixes for their combats. Uh, it was actually four sixes. It wasn't four sixes, but four attacks, and there were at least three sixes in this attack set. So that cleared the way to Moscow. So uh, probably right on the money in terms of timing, they're just a little bit off in terms of distance. You know, that's uh, Viasma there. <laughs> Bryansk, Orel's here, and uh, Bryansk is not on the map. There's Tula. And so really interesting kind of play, how that all kind of came together there. Leningrad fell. Uh, uh, took Rostov just by default because there were no units left because the Germans had not... Uh, been capturing VP hexes, they were not adding to the replacement level of the Soviet army. And so 
all the uh, Soviets were getting was the minimum of two uh, units per turn, and then in October they got one, and then uh, there were some reinforcements that came in the turn before or whatever. So it, it's, it was really interesting how it all played out, and I, I'm probably going to call it quits here with a, I'll call this a German victory, primarily because they only have, uh, you know, the oil fields here to capture, and uh, Moscow itself, which, <clears throat> uh, you know, this turn would probably pick up four units, and it'd be kind of a tough nut to crack, but the game's all but over. Now, in actual fact, I don't see where uh, we get the 12 VPs from. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then there's eight and nine. Oh, there's one there, 10. Oh, and Sebastopol, 11. Well, that's 11. Where's the, uh... Oh, Kalinin, 12. And there's some another city there, 13. So that probably makes sense. Okay, so there's enough there. I don't know why it goes up to 16. There must be VPs for, uh... Something else as well. Uh, the other thing about, about this is supply. So there's this concept of line of communication. So you have to be within, uh, in the winter time, two hexes of a city you control that has a line of communication back to the west edge. And that can meander any way you like, and the same for the Soviets, except the Soviets have four hex range. And um, I, I found that was... Uh, Restrictive on both sides, probably more restrictive on the Germans because they really had to end up in a town and then make sure they had an un, uh, no no enemy zone to control across as their their path back to the west. Pretty interesting game. I'd play a couple more times. It's not something that I would pull out and go, "Oh, this is the best East Front game in the world." It's clearly not. I don't know that there is a best East Front game in the world, but it was certainly entertaining. And there's a just uh, oh, that's not a that's not a VP hex. Anyway, good stuff. Enjoyed it. Highly recommend it if you happen to own the uh, Against the Odds 2010 annual. Uh, I don't even know if you guys can see that. I've got the camera uh, to my side, so it's one of the four games in there. I'm probably not going to bust out the other ones just at this moment. Uh, I was playing this to fulfill our chronological obligations, and that'll be our second of three titles that we're playing, uh, covering the East Front. I'm going to leave it off at November 41 with a uh, collapse of the Soviet army. We might play one more turn. I've got some reinforcements coming. But, um, you know, the Germans clearly have got full control of the South and are about to encircle uh, the Moscow uh, region. So we'll see what happens. Uh, I might play one more turn now that I think about it, just to be curious to see if uh, the Soviets can pull out some sort of uh, saving grace out of their backside. All right, guys, we'll catch you later.